ARK Invest's Brett Winton has issued a warning. If you're in the US and you want to model Y for individual personal use, you better act now. He explains that once the cars can roll out of the factory straight into serving as robotaxis, they become much, much, much more cash flow generative when sold to robotaxi fleet operators. Therefore, you'll probably have to wait until the cybercab ramps up before the Model Y becomes again available to individuals. Won't be too long before we find out whether or not Brett's warning was valid. He posted this in response to a clip where he spoke to Dan, who you guys may recognise as one of the very reasonable rational and totally unbiased folks occasionally appearing on the panel at CNBS who's never shown any bias toward Tesla or Elon Musk, never actively bet against Tesla stock and is therefore a very reasonable person with nothing but fair and reasonable opinions relating to Tesla. So let's see what happens when Brett of Ark Invest speaks to Dan about Tesla autonomy. I've not yet watched this clip but I have a suspicion that there may be a slight contrast in terms of opinions, possibly a, a gaping chasm between the two perspectives of these gentlemen that's what i don't understand like who's going to own the fleet because if he if they're going to be producing like like and i don't I, the whole idea of depots and cleaning them and charging them or having it come out of your model y come out of your driveway and go to a depot i mean that this is like this is sci-fi shit i mean this is not happening <laughs> in this de it's not happening in this it's decade it's happening and in austin right now so i'm going to try and be as reasonable fair and unbiased as I possibly can, keeping in mind that that's obviously impossible because I'm a deluded Tesla fanboy, I own some Tesla stock and therefore I can't possibly have anything reasonable, rational, fair or accurate to say about the company. But Dan dismissively makes the claim that the idea that Tesla vehicles will be operating autonomously, that people who own Tesla vehicles will be able to have them autonomously add themselves to the fleet, pick up and drop off passengers, blah blah blah, is quote sci-fi shit, suggesting that it's a few quadrillion years into the future, give or take. Now, Brett counters by uncontrollably laughing at Dan, I understand why, and suggesting that this is happening already in Austin today. Now, if you happen to be a Poindexter, the first thing you might say is, well, actually, and then you start running down the list of things that technically are not occurring exactly right now, exactly as stated by Dan, and say, see, look, huh? but of course, if you're not retarded, and you do actually have a brain, and you use your brain, you might ask questions like, have we seen a, a Tesla Model Y? roll off production lines in Austin, Texas, and then autonomously deliver itself to a customer, roughly half hour long, completely autonomous, self-delivering vehicle. Did that occur? Have we seen that entire self-delivery posted the entire trip? The answer to that would be yes. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that there's evidence that Tesla vehicles, while not today leaving a customer's driveway and <laughs> joining the robot taxi fleet in Austin, do in fact have the capability and also permission legally to do exactly that even a potato can see well if it drove itself from the factory to a customer's place half an hour away i'm on probably not much of a stretch to imagine that exact same software and that exact same vehicle instead of going from factory to customer's driveway going from customer's driveway to downtown austin where they're already legally operating robo taxis which brings me to the next point tesla now has a small fleet of tesla model y vehicles legally driving customers autonomously in austin texas I have an extremely controversial opinion. Actually, I've got lots of them. <laughs> Hello, I share them too. No fucks given. But I'm trolling in this case. My absolutely not at all controversial opinion is that if you have at least half a brain cell, you can join the dots. Tesla's legally operating robo taxis in Austin right now. They've expanded the service area twice within about six weeks from launch to first expansion to second expansion. There's been zero safety critical incidents so far. In other words, not only are they legally operating this service, but doing so extremely safely. The fact that they've expanded twice is further evidence of their confidence in the safety profile of their vehicles. So they're already operating robotaxis legally in Austin, and we have seen the first self-delivering vehicle from Model Y to customer's driveway. So the dismissive nature of Dan either suggests that he ha he's totally unaware that this is happening, or tinfoil hat alert, perhaps he's just so adamant that Elon bad, Tesla bad, short Tesla stock, etc., that he can't possibly accept reality. Now, again, if you're a Poindexter, you're like, but, but Dan said, uh, what about the cleaning and the depots? That, say, that's not happening yet. And, of course, thank you once again for confirming that you are, in fact, an adult virgin. you got to join the dots here. There's no need for massive depots yet. Tesla's fleet's too small for that to be a big deal. But we're already seeing the pieces of the puzzle fall into place. The most important, of course, is legally and safely operating robotaxis, which is already happening. Now, retard slash hater, possibly the same thing, 
point out, but there's, there's a person in the driver's seat. Oh, wait, no, they're not. Oh, wait, no, that's not in Austin. Oh, sorry, silly me. I mean, um, there's a person in the passenger seat still in Austin, which means they're technically not even robo-taxis, even though the person in the passenger seat is not driving the vehicle. Uh, uh, see, it's not doesn't even count. That's sci-fi shit. At which point I just say, look, I give up. I just can't get through to you. Now, this is very important because as far as I'm concerned, investing is about identifying opportunities in the future before everyone else has identified said opportunities and taken advantage of them. So if you can see all the pieces of the puzzle, a Model Y delivers itself to a customer from Tesla's factory. They're operating in Austin legally with robot taxis with no one in the driver's seat and they've expanded twice. They've also launched in California. If you're an investor and also not a moron, instead of reflexively dismissing the dark sci-fi shit, well, instead you go, oh fuck, actually good point. How long until this currently proven service has reached meaningful scale where it actually starts to move the needle financially for the company. That's the real question. The arrogance to dismiss, to imply that A, this is sci-fi shit and B, it's not happening anytime soon. It's next level. Again, investing is about identifying opportunities that will arise in the future, that will manifest in the future before you have been bitch slapped in the face with the financial data to put in your spreadsheet. Dan is making a major mistake here, a major error of judgment, being so dismissive. I can understand the reaction of Brett of Ark Invest laughing. This shit is already happening in Austin. Join the dots. No, it's <laughs> not. Who's going to own the fleet? No one wants okay. to own these fleets. Well, like, one, who, right gonna... now, Tesla's on balance sheeting them. They could they could collateralize debt, fund the cost of goods sold, and hold them on balance sheet. My guess is they will sell them to operators. The, the real question is, like, you what percent about of Ubers? All right, hold on a second. What percent of Ubers are owned by operators? It's like less than like 15%. But like, is this a, I really don't want to be too mean to Dan, but it's, it's very hard not to just describe him accurately, which would be, it's completely fucking retarded. Most Ubers, the vehicle is owned by the driver because a driver <laughs> is necessary. And it just so happens that people who own a vehicle and also drive an Uber will combine those two facts and drive the vehicle that they own on Uber. This is not a very good comparison. In fact, it's completely irrelevant and invalid. This, by the way, is a common mistake I see over and over and over when people are looking at anything that Tesla's doing. They grasp desperately and try to find something they can compare to, think they've found a valid and applicable example when they have not, and then go, look, see, this is hard to watch. Good luck to Brett maintaining his composure in the face of such absolute retardation. Of course, no one... because Uber, you have to attach a driver to. It, it's like, you know, the, 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 the fact that the driver has to sit in the car means the driver's going to own the ass. If you don't have to have the driver sit in the car, then somebody could run a fleet. Because right now, if I'm going to run a fleet of Ubers, I also have to hire Uber drivers. That's very hard to to to, to you know ha to get the labor in place to to run this. So think about it this way: if if Tesla can either get eight thousand gross profit for selling to me, or some tens of thousand dollar of dollars in gross pro profit for either on balance sheeting the asset or selling to an operator, why would they sell to the individual anymore? And if, if, right. if you want a Model Y, like you probably have to buy it sometime over the next six months because I don't think they're going to be available next year for individual. Oh, no, stop years. it. I mean, come no, on. I'm I mean, like, give me a like, break. People, and you know what? If like, you want the option value of having your own vehicle that can drive itself around, your own vehicle that becomes its own chauffeur, like, better act now. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna try to buy a Tesla, and they're gonna be like, "Well, we could sell it to you, but we have to sell it to you for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars because of how much gross profit it would generate." Oh my God! Give me a break. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the, this is gonna be maybe like a twenty thirty two thing, but but uh, but again. So a twenty thirty two thing, apparently. I think Brett's expression says it all. Now again, we are already seeing Tesla Model Ys, the same vehicles that Brett has just explained. You might want to buy one now. And the reason, of course, is their cash flow generating potential when autonomous is astronomical, meaning there's likely to be a massive imbalance between supply and demand. We are seeing those exact same vehicles right now, legally and safely operating in Austin, Texas. He does have a point. The logic here checks out. Is there anyone watching who thinks it will take seven years, more than half a decade, before it will be possible for people to purchase Tesla vehicles to operate as fleet owners, seven years between legally safely operating in Austin, expanding multiple times in Austin, launching in California, and people buying Tesla vehicles to operate commercially as robot taxis. Seven years. Again, you're the futurist. Listen, you and I can <laughs> a go, twenty thirty thing. What 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 planet are you? Because on? these you, because these listen, these things listen. don't scale. I love Waymo. Waymo's been on the street. They they like you're dude. Brett's expressions are just absolutely incredible. So 
I mean, I really, I don't want to be too hard on Dan, but I can't not tell the truth. He's retarded. He's now just grasped at another irrelevant example, which is Waymo. I can see where he's going with this. He's just said that these things don't scale. And rather than looking at Tesla, who, by the way, again, launched in Austin, expanded in Austin, launched in California, expanded again in Austin, spent about six weeks scaling at a staggering rate. Tesla's done in a few months what Waymo took the better part of a literal decade to do in terms of scaling, clearly showing that Tesla is scaling a lot faster than Waymo. Dan suggested that these things, as in all robotaxis, because obviously what Waymo and Tesla are doing, totally identical, as if the rate of expansion that Waymo has demonstrated historically, using a totally different technological approach, pre-mapping in high definition, covered in LiDAR and blah, 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 is a cut and dry example of how quickly Tesla could possibly scale their robotaxi fleet, despite the fact of the Austin launch, the expansion, the launch of Comifone, and another expansion in Austin. Like, wh why is Dan ignoring these facts? The look on... The look on Brett's face, watch, this is the exact moment that Dan says, these things, that there, right there, this is after Dan just said these things don't, won't scale quickly, right? <laughs> He's gone from laughing to, bro, are you, what the fuck? Now, of course, I don't think Brett's going to describe Dan as completely retarded, but um, I wonder what he was thinking at this exact moment. Oh, man. Oh, I feel so bad, like, punching down on Dan, like, just, you know, he's obviously really dumb, at least in this one facet. But the things he's saying are so idiotic. That it's difficult to be gentle here. I mean, <laughs> again, <laughs> Brett's face says it all, dude. I'm going to rewind a second. Just watch this. It's glorious. What, what, what planet are you because on? These, you, because these, listen, these listen. things don't scale. I love Waymo. Waymo's been on the street. They, they're, they, like, you're still, you're still, you own a car that's got supervised full self-driving. You, you have an S in front of your FSD. Like, yes, you know, and right so. Now. Just very quickly wanted to comment on Dan's implication that fsd currently has an s for supervised therefore obviously it's not capable of doing anything at all because that's the thinking right now instead of actually watching the software operate and watch the supervisor do approximately nothing and acknowledging oh okay wait so the supervisor on that particular trip that i just watched that lasted 15 minutes did nothing they were there supervising but had to intervene zero times hmm. i guess the software was driving the whole time instead of acknowledging that point we fall back to, well, technically somebody needs to supervise, therefore it's not doing anything, therefore invalid, doesn't count. Now, this is a very, very common mistake I see made from a lot of Tesla haters. We are investors, right? So we're trying to identify things that will occur in the future before they occur. Like, for example, magically, suddenly the S disappearing and it's no longer requiring supervision. And how would we know if that might happen? And if so, what sort of time frame? Well, perhaps we could actually watch or use the software ourselves. And note how infrequent interventions from the human supervisor are. That might be a useful data point. So too, the observation of the thousands and thousands and thousands of completely autonomous rides already taking place so far in Austin. At some point, FSD users will no longer need to supervise. The only thing to focus on here is what is the software currently capable of doing today? Not who's supervising. Are they in the driver's seat? Are they in the passenger seat? Just watch the software operate. Watch how much of the ride it's doing versus the human quote unquote supervisor. That will tell you everything you need to know about its current capabilities. If you continue to do this, you'll also be able to determine its rough trajectory and rate of improvement. And yeah, I, think, I, mean, I think there's an open, there's an interesting open question about between robo, the robo taxi business, I think they'll be able to deliver as someone who has FSD, when will that be able to be unsupervised? And when it can be unsupervised, are they gonna have to have an operator that is overseeing it in a data center? That's an interesting question because I've paid up front for something that is a price that didn't accommodate, you know, the, the labor cost of an operator overseeing my vehicle as I'm sending it off to park. Uh, and so I don't know how they're going to, like, they may uh, hold off on delivering unsupervised while they're scaling out RoboTech, uh, just because we don't know what, to what degree the operators will need to be instrumentally involved. So I was about to interrupt, but apparently that's the end of the clip now. I do have some thoughts on this. I'm almost certain that Tesla is going to focus on scaling their robotaxi fleet before they focus on enabling FSD unsupervised for customers throughout the US and the world. Bang for buck return on investment makes a lot more sense for Tesla to focus on this. Keep in mind, Tesla has a lot more control over their decision to operate robotaxis in a particular area, particular city, than an expansion, than they do enabling FSD for a certain customer. Never mind the issues. What if that customer crosses state lines? Or, like, it's a complicated mess. Personally, I would expect Tesla's robotaxi fleet to be servicing a huge percentage of all US citizens before they start enabling FSD unsupervised. I just want to put my final thoughts out here. 
Dan is representative of many people who are going to miss a very significant opportunity as a result of arrogance, hubris, or possibly severe incurable DMF syndrome. How many more data points do people like Dan need to see? How many more thousands of trips in Tesla Rover taxis? Safe, incident-free trips. And how many more cities, how many more expansions of service areas before they ask themselves, hmm, did I really just discover thousands of safe, fully autonomous trips in Tesla Model Ys operating as robo taxis for paying customers have actually taken place? It's not sci-fi shit, but it's literally happening right now. If I'm being honest, folks, I really do think this comes down to arrogance. I think Dan is so arrogant in his own worldview that he's completely overlooking such extremely obvious data points. Tesla launching in Austin, expanding in Austin, a few weeks later in the shape of a dick just for the lols, launching in California, and then expanding again in Austin. So arrogant, heads so far up his own ass that instead of seeing a Tesla vehicle drive itself from the Gigafactory in Texas to a customer, half an hour drive, safe, legal, and successful, and being able to join the dots, well, instead of the factory, that could have been a customer's driveway. And uh, since they're already operating robotaxis in downtown Austin, I mean, hypothetically, if there was a customer who lived within half an hour of downtown Austin, hypothetically, their Model Y could have driven from their driveway to downtown Austin and be picking up and dropping off passengers. Oh, shit. Instead of seeing that and joining the dots, oh, that's sci-fi shit. It's 2032 shit. I think Brett really did have a valid question when asking Dan what planet was he on? Because it ain't Earth. It ain't even the same fucking solar system, bruv. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.